a no sleep story posted by Jam France. You don't have to go anywhere to find the most terrifying place in my town. It comes to you. In my town, the most dangerous place is the abandoned Macy's department store. The basement, to be more precise. It's not easy to find, but people still manage to, mostly by accident. You're perfectly safe, as long as at least one of your feet stays on the stairs. You're supposed to just go back up, and eventually it'll move on. I'm not sure how many people have found it. Lots of people claim to, but it's hard to verify. Those that do take both feet off the stairs, well, no one hears from them to find out what comes next. Most of them probably end up listed as a missing person, that's why I'm writing this. I want people to know what happened to my sister and my friends. And if I can't figure something out soon, to me too. I want to share what it's really, truly, like down here. I know, I know, it doesn't sound that bad. A basement full of abandoned clothes and items with no windows so the darkness is only broken up by smatterings of flickering lights. Where if you listen closely enough you'll hear another set of quiet footsteps always just behind you. But trust me, it's the most terrifying place I've ever been, and I'd give literally anything to leave. The store sprawls on for what must be miles. It's overwhelming in its vastness, yet not an inch of it is safe. Something pursues you down here or maybe even multiple somethings. It's hard to tell, I can guess what you're thinking. A department store that people disappear into, that'd be shut down in an instant. Yes, you're right. And it was, back the early 2000s. It used to just be a normal store, people shopped there for years without incident but then, something changed. No one is quite sure what caused it, but one day, no one that stepped into the basement ever came back out. Once it became apparent that there was no hope in saving those that were lost, the whole place was eventually torn down, as you can probably guess, that's not where the story ends. The basement still manages to claim people. The only difference now is that you don't go downtown to where the old Macy's used to be and take the escalator down, to get there. Now, at least in my town, any escalator, elevator, or set of stairs you take down could bring you down here instead of where you were intending to go. It doesn't matter where you are, or where they usually lead. One of my classmates once claimed that he was just going downstairs in his house, but upon reaching the last step before the bottom, instead of his living room, he was staring into the basement of the store. I believe him too, because his story lacked the bravado of others I've heard, you could tell he was deeply afraid. He also mentioned things that I now know to be true from my own experience, like the smell of old and decaying things, the odd stale breeze that emerges like a sigh from deep within the windowless store. There are some steps you can take to increase your odds of finding this place, but I'm not going to share those here, I don't need that on my conscience. For my entire life, it's just been a given that you always have to be vigilant and pay close attention to where you are because rumor has it that if you take both feet off the stairs, you're stuck here forever. It turns out it's not just a rumor. There were five of us before. We had tried so many times to find this place. My sister and I were fascinated by the stories, as were a few of our friends, and wanted to see if it was real. Most of us were curious, but my sister Maddie, she was straight up obsessed. If we found it, we weren't going to actually to go in, Maddie had promised me. We tried several times before but we were successful a few days ago. We went to the top floor of Keith's dorm and went down so many flights, but eventually, somewhere around where the fourth floor should have been, we finally found it. Rows upon rows of decaying clothes, and random items greeted us, for as far as the eye could see. The weak overhead lighting only illuminated so far into the distance. After that, it was just blackness, but you could feel the vastness of it. It was breathtaking, and not in a good way. A soft moan could be heard from just beyond the threshold, but we couldn't see the source. Maddie wanted to put her hand through, she said, to snap a picture. She did, and it came back a pixelated mess. She was disappointed and put one foot down onto the basement floor to lean in for a better shot. When nothing seemed to happen, she got bold and put both feet down. She turned around to grin at us. But the smile instantly left her face and was quickly replaced by what seemed to be a mix of fear and confusion. 
Her eyes widened and darted back and forth as she searched around, frantically. She called out, and I waved my hands and yelled to her. I was just inches from her but when I reached out, I couldn't touch her. She didn't seem to hear or see us, but she seemed to catch a glimpse at the source of the moaning. I'm not sure what she saw, but whatever it was, the sight of it caused her to take off running with an expression of pure terror on her face. I could sometimes see her as she ran through the lit portions, but none of us could see what she was actually running from. Angie, Keith, Sky, and I went in after her. Mary ran back up the stairs. That's good, it means Mary probably survived, that was a while ago, a couple of days. Now, it's just me, and the quiet footsteps that follow me through the aisles. It's funny, I used to think that the scariest thing in the world would be being chased by something just a bit faster than you. You turn back and you see it coming and just can't outrun it. But, I've since found from recent experience that what's actually scarier is something that doesn't need to run after you because you can keep going, and going, and going, but eventually you'll run out of energy or become cornered, and it knows that. You just hear the slow, deliberate, wet slap of bare flesh on linoleum. It doesn't have to run, eventually you will fall, and it will take you. Distance doesn't seem to help. It's approached me from directions that I would have thought impossible. Once it was far behind me, and then suddenly pursuing me from the front, that was the one time I saw it. Just a glimpse of details as it emerged into a dimly lit portion of the aisle. I hope I never see it again. I'm still holding out hope that dehydration gets me first. You can't tell day from night down here. There are no windows. Just weakly flickering fluorescent lights in some areas and a darkness unlike anything I've seen before. In others. It's disorienting and makes it so easy to imagine what must be lurking in the shadows. Just out of sight. I'm grateful I have my phone with me. Before now I just used it to check the time or illuminate pitch black areas and turned it off to conserve the battery. But when it finally sunk in that I was never leaving, I started writing this. It's been comforting in a way. This story's massive. It's got to be tens of miles if not more. I've ran and walked off and on for days and I've yet to find the end. I've stopped calling out for my sister or our friends. Not because I've lost hope of finding them, but because I know something else already did. At first, I had been relieved when those footsteps finally veered off in a different direction and began to fade into the distance. I was so grateful for the chance to stop and rest that I didn't even think about what it meant at the time, until I heard the screams, far enough away that there was no way I could help, but close enough for me to hear everything, as bad as the screams are. The sounds that come after the screaming stops are always far worse. New people seem to join me from time to time. Sometimes I hear them. Once or twice I've seen them. I guess they took both feet off the stairs as well. I wonder where they came from. My town, or somewhere else entirely. But we're never close enough to ask and I'd never risk shouting here. I've been down here long enough now that I've started noticing certain things. And the more I notice these details the more they unnerve me. For example, the store and items within it seem to just grow and grow. For everyone that disappears down here, the store seems to grow just a bit bigger. The clothes and housewares I've ran past, if you take a really close look, you'll see they aren't quite right looking. The textures are all wrong. They aren't made out of fabric, plastic or metal. Everything in here is made of something else. Something more familiar. Now that I'm looking, I've noticed that the clothes seem to sigh with something like resignation under my touch. It's never truly silent down here. I've developed a theory, maybe I'm just losing my mind, but I'm starting to suspect that there is no such thing as death down here. Maybe just deconstruction and remaking. I'm worried that I may find out very soon. I'm so tired, I don't even have the energy to sit upright, much less to continue onward. I hear the sharp sound of hangers slowly sliding on metal as it searches for me under racks of clothing. I hear the footsteps far too close for comfort. I'm hoping that in sharing this, it will encourage more caution in others and maybe prevent a few thrill seekers from following in our footsteps. If you find that a perfectly ordinary trip down some stairs suddenly leaves you staring into this dark expanse, 
Please just go back where you came from and don't look back. Please don't take both feet off the stairs.